Welcome to another OCD Recovery Instagram Live. I'm going to be doing two Instagram Lives today, talking about different topics. And the first one that I've been meaning to do for a while is in relation to the sensations that go on in the OCD cycle, which I think you'll find interesting because I haven't covered it um, as specifically as this. So what you have happen is you have a situation where in your brain, when we're triggered by something and something's latched, say a fear, say we look into our past and we have a particular fear, something that scares us, that our mind, we scan for it, we check for it and we go, is everything safe? Am I okay? Is everything all right? Is there any problems? Is there any concerns? And we scan in our mind to see if there are any concerns. And then what we do is we go, ah, there was a concern. Let's take, for example, a fear where somebody may think, uh, what, if, um, what if I have HIV? The person then, his brain sends a signal where they're terrified, that they, they find this a scary thing. So the sensation is raised. So they're sort of going along flat and calm. And then they notice, ah, HIV fear, it raises up. Now, then you ask to this point here, can I relax? Can I now relax? And it says no, because this has occurred. So now the calm signal that was going along like this, the relaxed, no anxiety, is now up here. And now it's going along like that. So now it's raised and it's latched at this point. Okay, now, that is not going to come down necessarily. It could come down with learning to see that that's just an OCD thought, that sensation was raised for an incorrect reason, incorrect reason. But it's not necessarily going to happen because in situations like real event, OCD and different things like that, it may stay up there because you may not be able to bring it down there because your brain's like, no, I can't let you off that 0.001% risk. So then you're staying at this point and that is chronically in the background. Now that can have attached to it association of chronic guilt, chronic anxiety locked on in the background. And that won't go off for me for years locked on one. Sometimes moving around, but predominantly one. Now, the problem with that situation is that you've now got that locked on in the background. And what that does is that won't come down until you can show to the brain that that is actually doesn't need to be set at that point. That actually needs to be set here. So we need to show to ourselves that we choose at what level that's set. Now, that comes down to how we're catastrophizing. Albert Ellis puts it as awfulizing. Um, in his books, uh, what we, what we, where we, 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 we're ranking something much higher. So now, if I believe there'll be various irrational beliefs that have set it here. What are those beliefs? Those beliefs are things like having HIV. My whole life's ruined. I can't get a partner. Uh, if I have HIV, I'll be ill. Uh, it will, I will feel out, ousted by a lot of society and so on. So it's set there. Now, when we break those beliefs down too, yes, I could still have a, have all my life goals more or less. Yes, I could still live the life I want. Yes, I could still function. Yes, I could still do dot, dot, dot. We start to see that it was an illusion that had painted it at this point. It was an illusion. An illusion created by a host of irrational beliefs. That, when we break it down, then comes down to here. And now it's at this point and it's going along like that until OCD goes, ah, what about this? And we learn to see its movements. That's where we learn to create distance between it. We learn to see that it does that. It creates those irrash. It, it, it moves that thing up and down. Then we're able to distance from it. But when it's locked on, we're going to have to learn how to get under it, which are the main principles of unconditional self-life and other acceptance as laid out by the founder of CBT, Albert Ellis. It will not reduce from that point. This is the biggest myth in OCD, that people can just create distance when it when it's locked and it's specifically if it's a real event maybe they've got HIV maybe they've got a disease or whatever it don't come down therefore they have to learn this for years in the OCD community there's been books saying that you can just relabel this you can just change your belief but we know too well it doesn't reduce we know that because we experience it and we've lived it, especially those with false memory, real event, harm, OCD, locked for years. It doesn't work. Otherwise, forums would be empty places 
when nobody is there asking for help. This is something that is predominantly what I raise awareness to, which I think is the, the, the most important thing that in OCD we understand, that is our awfulizing and catastrophizing as well as not understanding unconditional self-acceptance, which was laid out originally in the CBT uh, by Albert Ellis, but is not followed through for OCD, that the, the path was generally going down the direction of leave thoughts as thoughts, which does not cut it. It does not cut it. I tried this for years, so have so many people. I've been mean, worked with thousands of people over the years. I know that the OCD journey is not as simplistic as that. Yes, in parts, you're able to create that distance, but trying to do it where it is relating to things like harm OCD, sexual themed OCDs that are related to false memory and real event without unconditional self-acceptance. Uh, it's a futile pursuit. Whether you can actually do it or not, I, 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 I tried it for many, many years. I've seen when it's really locked on, there's varying differences between people. You have some people that are able to create that distance and even myself able to create a some element of distance, but never to get that full piece, never to get that real release. Uh, it very, varies in personalities. So you have some people who are able to, uh, with the way their OCD is latched, able to get that distance. You get some people who've got very light OCD that are able just to see what OCD is and relabel it OCD and create a distance from it just by knowing it's OCD. Uh, you get that. Then you get people that are very locked onto it, doesn't release. I can think of many cases of people I've worked with for years that until they really saw that it wasn't terrifying, it didn't release. And I was specifically one of those. It would not do that, it wouldn't. Uh, if I'd spent years and years creating distance, would it have done it? I don't know how I would have. I'd spent years reading the books, uh, trying to relabel thoughts. I'd done meditation, mindfulness for years. It wouldn't, it wouldn't take the risk. It just said to me, or it was just saying all the time, no, this time it is real, this time it really was. And I said, no, go with uncertainty for years, leave it there, wouldn't. It would just would always grip in. Uh, and I don't know, I can't see how anyone would create that distance. You can create that distance later when you see the mechanism of being able to release it. But trying to do it initially, I've not seen it. I've not seen it. And as, it, as a main, as the main form, as the main form of the process being recommended as, as the main form, you're going to have people stuck for years that aren't going to do it. I, I, I can't see it's possible. Uh, would, would, would I say it's completely impossible? Uh, in my own experience, my own journey, I can't see it would be impossible. I, I would say it would have been not possible for me to do it, to create that distance. I don't think it would have. Uh, would I say in a lot of people it is it, the same situation as me? Absolutely. But would I rule it out as an impossibility? No, I don't like to rule anything out as an impossibility. Uh, but I can tell you, when you do get under it, the, the freedom that it instantly creates is such a change that it was literally sort of locked on harm, real event in the past, hammering away. And then suddenly it shifted down. It just went, no, there's nothing from here you need to worry about, Vroom, like that, and just off. But it took a long time to see that and get that realisation. Albert Ellis used to say, you know, that, that, that unconditional self and life and other acceptance was the key component for getting people to, to, to be at peace. It was the key component. But then we sort of drifted off with the thoughts of thoughts stuff, which is vital. We have to have an understanding of thoughts of thoughts. We do have to have an understanding of that. We have to, we, because it's a large part of the process. But what I'm highlighting is that it's very, very important to get under it. It will not, it, it often will not release. In most cases, it will not release fully. People tend to float along, a sort of lumping it, a sort of going along through life with it as what it is, uh, but not, 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 not nothing, it's sort of just like where they're better, they're there, they're okay, they're living, but they're never free. True freedom comes from the unconditional self, life and other acceptance. It really gives you that freedom where you don't feel locked in anywhere. The body doesn't feel locked. It doesn't feel clinging. It feels separate. It feels free. It feels as if you haven't got OCD. It's exactly the same. I mean, my brain living day to day, I can't tell the difference between having OCD or not. It's an, there's no intrusive thoughts. They've, got lock, they've lost all their intrusiveness. 
complete nonsense that has been said for a long time where, oh, you have loads of intrusive thoughts, but you just don't care about them. that. That's not, that's not recovery. That's just putting up with, lumping it, okay? So it, you will have these intrusive thoughts, but they will, they will come in like all humans where they'll just be, you'll be crossing the road and someone walks out in front of you and you think they were pushed a bit fast. I'd like to push them in front of a bus. Like a thought that all humans have, ridiculous. They don't want to do it, but the brain just sends out that sensation. Uh, now that's lost its intrusiveness. It will come in, but it doesn't come in like that and lock. Um, and so that's vital, understanding that. But it is not, it's when it changes, we don't have intrusive thoughts like that. There's no difference to between to having OCD or not. And it's such a key part of the journey. Um, so that's important. There's no locked on chronic anxiety latched to a situation for years. That is no longer in there at all. Uh, so that is different. Um, and that is the process. Uh, and it's so important that, 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 that this is what I'm doing, you know, day in, day out, talking about why we, we can leave. We don't even have to make it as complicated as all these sort of theory based terms that we use. We can break it down so it's much more simplistic. And that is you are only stuck because you're afraid of something. You are afraid of something and that's what it's latched to. It's gone up to here. It's latched. You need to bring it down to there. That is just fear. As you become less afraid, it goes down. That is it, okay? And in my experience, you know, I've worked with people from all over the world. I work with people with a sort of low level OCD that they're, they're just, they're, where it's not affecting them drastically to the most severe uh, sort of life-changing OCD out there. People come to me who've had brain surgeries in different parts of the world. People who've come to me who've been to 10 therapists and spent hundreds of thousands of dollars going to every specialist they can. You know, it's, if, if, it didn't, if it didn't work, if we couldn't get under it with fear of fear, you, nobody, nobody would ever get better. And, uh, and I certainly wouldn't see anyone because it's, it's, it does work. It's getting under those fears, but doing it takes practice to, to, to see it for yourself and to show other people how to do it because they really have to have an understanding sort of picking away from all sides of the fear to bring it down. Uh, and that's what I'm always helping people to, to understand and do that. Uh, there is an element of an art to that because you're, you're, you're using a lot of sort of life experiences and ways of seeing things to help to do that. Um, so you do, you, there is an element of an art to it, the same as in any, uh, any job that anyone does, there's an element of an art to it. But it's not an art that is not it is reserved for 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 for, for somebody for only someone. It's just something that we can teach ourselves. But how we do it has got its own application. The same as if you, if you look at uh, anyone from different life coaches to different therapists, they bring a different thing to it. If I looked at Tony Robbins and I think he's incredible at motivation, and then I looked at someone else, I don't think they necessarily do it in the same way as him. So there is an element of an art to it, but we learn to be our own coach, our own therapist. We are for ourselves. That is that is the goal. Okay. So if you're going to therapy, the goal is to become your own therapist. You, you, that's what you're doing. You, 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 you're learning to do it for yourself. What you don't want is a relationship where you're relying on another individual to prop you up. You're learning to, to do it for yourself, to change your perspectives and be there for you because you're with you for life. You're with you for life. You can't run away from OCD. The brain is coming with you. People often say, I've booked a trip. I'm going somewhere. And I say, well, where do you think, you, what are you doing it for? And they say, well, I'm going to, 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 to get a break. And I said, well, you're not going to get a break from OCD because it's coming along with you in your head. So I think that's a very important point. Uh, so I want you to think a bit about of your journey as you're learning to pick apart the fears, learning to be less afraid. Um, and that's what I've spent all my career doing, teaching people to be less afraid. Uh, and it's something that we learn to do for ourselves, learning to be less afraid. And I like to keep it very simplistic. A lot of people, I used to find that along my own journey, that things were so rigid and so uh, fixated and specific techniques and stuff. I used to feel lost, like I was reading a giant board of equations. And I used to be very scared of that and think, ah, I've got to get everything right or I'll be lost and stuck forever. And that was a daunting task. And I thought, I also thought that, you know, when I, when I built OCD Recovery, the, 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 the company that I run, uh, I wanted it to be somewhere that was somewhere where people didn't feel alone, where they could talk and speak to others. There was a social element that was fun and less of the isolated 
feeling that OCD puts us in, in that place. So I wanted to create something that was a large social community where everyone was helping each other, a kind of big group mentality where you've got lots of people sharing their knowledge and helping one another through the journey, which is what a lot of the Facebook group and the WhatsApp groups have become. Um, and and I, want, I want to see the way for OCD to change because I've I sort of set myself out a 10-year plan to try and change OCD in the best way I could worldwide. And the thing that I, I think is, is, is key to this is, is us seeing that we can help one another changing our fears. And we can keep it simplistic as that. And we do that and help one another. And as a community together, that will change things. That will change things as people become more aware, more aware of helping each other. Ah, oh, have you thought about this? Have you thought about, this is where you're thinking rationally. As humans, we want to become more rational. It's one of the most important things. But we don't because, because it doesn't get enough attention how, fund, how crucial that rational thinking is to the core of anxiety cycle. It is the core. It's the irrational thinking driving it. Oh, it would be catastrophic if X occurred. It would be awful. It would be unbearable. I will never be able to live or function again if that was to occur. So you have all of that going on. That is the process. Um, so yeah, that's what I wanted to draw attention to, to show how it's us going from here to here um, and, and why that is so, so important. You know, we, we, what, what we're doing all the time is we're having discussions about breaking down those irrational beliefs, showing people things from lots of different angles, showing them things about life and why they view one thing as one thing and another as another. And they, they look at something as terrifying that hasn't happened, whereas another thing that's also scary, like driving a car where they could be trapped and crashed and on fire in a car crash, not scared about that, but scared of lymphoma. Why they will take uncertainty there and not on the other and how OCD latches and so on. And so giving them a lot of understanding of sort of life concepts that come into it. Hence why I come from a life coaching angle uh, in relation to OCD recovery, because I believe it's key because it is drawing on all the parts of life and how we see things and how we view things in the now, today. It's today, it's not the past. It's our beliefs today that are causing the anxiety cycle. What is, what is happening in our thinking right now? What are we thinking of this second in our minds that is causing us to be stuck? What is happening today? Not some trauma in the past. The trauma in the past, it's only how we're viewing that from this moment. So it, it, in everything, it's like that. Uh, a good example is when I was working with Elena Ferns, who you'll see on uh, my Instagram page, who was in the Manchester bombings, uh, in the terrorist attack at the Ariana Grande concert. And she was at the front and a bomb went off and she developed PTSD and she couldn't even walk uh, at the time. She had to be carried out. Uh, and she couldn't go anywhere near it, couldn't read any newspaper articles, couldn't even watch it. Uh, she was having tons of physical anxiety symptoms for, for a long time after. And she came to me and we got, got her to a position through facing the fears and changing her perspective on the event bit by bit by bit that she was able to go back to the Ariana Grande concert, um, the one that came on after since the terrorist attack at the Manchester Arena. And she went back right at the front row, enjoyed it dancing and no physical anxiety symptoms. Uh, and so that's a great example of where it was her perspective in the now, it was her thinking in the now that was fueling that whole cycle. And uh, picking that apart bit by bit was what got, got, got her better. Uh, and it was amazing to see that because uh, uh, it was something that was such an unfortunate event and it caused so many physical anxiety symptoms and was limiting her life in so many ways that getting under that was, made, made a significant difference to her life. Um, but there's plenty of things like that in demonstration, not just with myself, but with, um, with, in life uh, that we see and we change our perspectives on as we go through life and we see things differently and we observe things differently and it changes. And, and that's so important. It's about our perspectives, how we're viewing something. Always behind that anxiety cycle is some rigid, rigid thinking, black and white rigid thinking that is there, that is gripping, that is locking on and keeping it all going, uh, where we're looking at something really irrationally that's clinging on in the background. So I think that's key to point out in today's Instagram Live. I will be back on here probably this afternoon uh, talking about uh, relationships, in relationship OCD, and how our perception of those relationships as we go through other relationships and experience being single and being in a relationship how that changes and how that fuels the cycle of our OCD. 
Guys, I will see you on the next Instagram Live. And I will be covering questions in the next one. I'm not doing the questions today because I wanted to cover just a specific topic. Um, but I will be on the next one doing questions and answers. Guys, I will see you then. Take it easy. Bye.